Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Just finished up my eighth prototype for a bad mobile game, but I'm glad to see you all here at my presentation on video game monetization. Now, video games are big business. And with all this exchange of currency going on over the past few decades, there's been some major evolutions in video game monetization strategies. And I thought you'd be interested in seeing some of them scaled against each other. Oh, so you'll be ranking them as far as, you know, how effective they are as monetization strategies, correct? What? No, no, that, that sounds hard, if not like impossible and besides i'm an overworked game developer here not like an economist or something no instead i'll be placing all the monetization methods on the acceptance by society scale which aims to inform you of the general acceptance any one money grubbing strategy may have on the general population and by general population i really just mean sweaty gamers because we're the only ones that actually give a shit so let's get started with pay to own the traditional method games made money you would purchase a physical copy or a digital license to play a game now back in my day things were simple i used to walk 14 miles to the game store so i could own a copy of fucking bum bum's oreo defense on my nintendo which costed me 14 cents yeah pay to own just gets a pretty solid rating overall with physical maybe getting a slightly higher rating because while both let you play the game only one gets you an actual physical copy of the game that you can resell later by the way or even pick up old games used but you do miss out on digital sales so there's that nevertheless pay to own pretty good rating and while we're here dlc or downloadable content where you pay for additional content for an already existing game it's the same general idea and so it gets the same rating now while pay to own may be the first thing that actually comes to your mind when i say pay to play it really isn't the only way you can pay to play a game subscription services you pay a monthly fee and you can only play the game while your subscription is active wow these fucking suck. It is crazy to think that they were at one point seen as the only way to keep up a live service game. Yeah, most modern gamers see subscription services as old and dated and just kind of like a pain in the ass, so they get a pretty bad score overall. Now, as an offshoot of subscription services, uh, memberships are something. See, the game is free, but you can pay a monthly subscription for something? Sometimes they're just pseudo subscription services so that the game developers can claim their games are free to play and other times they just give you items or make your name golden or something like that. In any case, memberships are also seen as kind of dated and old, but I would argue they live on quite, quite strongly, just under a new identity. More on that later though. Yeah, memberships, they go, uh, I don't know, they go here, I guess, I don't know. Moving along with free to play, advertisements are the low tier games monetization method of choice, and they are not well-liked. They're often the marker of a cheap game that no one would want to actually spend money on, and they can be seriously intrusive to the gameplay experience. Now, they can be a great way for smaller name games to get some revenue, and they don't have to be annoying. Most people understand the purpose and even the value of ads, but that's not going to stop them from hating them. And so, with a heavy heart, ads get a pretty shitty placement. Microtransactions, another way free-to-play games can make money, or fuck it, pay-to-play games can do it too. Now, microtransactions are just any purchase made in the game, and the idea behind them is completely innocent. It can be the exact same as DLC, providing more content for an already existing game, or it can, you know, be gambling for kids. Torolf Germstrom correctly identifies in his talk Let's Go Whaling that most microtransactions can be categorized into four distinct categories. Based on Bartle's taxonomy of player types. Progress, customization, competitive advantage, and content. Unfortunately, the actual talk is about, you know, by definition, manipulating people into spending money on your mobile game. That's a good value because my anchor was at 50. They are scarce, they go away. The first spend is, uh, it breaks the ice. Then they think of themselves as spenders in the game. The stuff that feels is in their pocket and then threaten to take it away unless uh, they pay up. Make stuff immediately useful, immediate gratification. And you can start to see why microtransactions have such a negative connotation attached to them. But we'll try and split them up into these four parts anyway and place them accordingly on the scale, which is a very difficult thing to do because of just the variety of ways games use to actually push these microtransactions and how they let their existence bleed into the game design. Make sure that your games aren't too skill-based. Make sure grinding and paying are legitimate versions of progressing in the game. The loop always goes through the meta stage where, where your store, where, where you're, you're spending money. But let's try anyway. Now progression microtransactions are easy to place. 
They're fucking shit. They directly incentivize grindifying gameplay loops, and they feed off our human instincts for achievement and progression. Customization microtransactions have had historically pretty questionable ways of pushing themselves onto players, but they don't affect gameplay, and they can be a great way for players to express themselves, so overall not too shabby. Competitive advantage microtransactions. No, th those fucking suck. Content microtransactions. Uh, but sure, it's just DLC. It gets the same placement as that. Gambling microtransactions. Now, this is a method, not a type. I, I know that, but it gets its own placement because it is just fucking evil. You guys would love it. Whew, wee. All right, just one more special type of microtransaction I'd like to review. It's the predecessor of the membership I mentioned earlier, and it's the Seasons Pass, or the Battle Pass, or the Gold Pass, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. You pay for a pass where you can unlock uh, customization items or resources or other fun knickknacks by completing challenges throughout the duration of the season, however long that may be. Now there is a fierce debate going on right now on gaming forums and on the schoolyard on the topic of battle passes, and the gaming community in general is largely just undecided. Whether or not battle passes are a roundabout way for games to give players things to do in game and more content and rewarding them with customization items and other things that are well worth the price of the pass, or a predatory scheme that takes both your time and your money by having all the rewards be at such a great value, but then making you actually play the game to get them, making you treat the game more like a job than something you do for fun. Yeah, so the uh, Battle Seasons Pass is a little bit uh, controversial, so we'll just... We'll just put it here for now. That seems fine. One thing is for certain though, is that they must be working because they are fucking everywhere. Every game has a battle pass. Seriously, again, you guys would love these. Anyhow, pushing ahead, we have game passes, not to be confused with seasons passes. In game passes, you pay a monthly fee for a large selection of games that you can download at any time. You can think of them like the streaming services of video games, only you aren't actually streaming anything. You aren't paying developers directly, but they still have the luxury of making games games that are traditionally pay to play, so everyone wins. Game passes are also a really affordable way for players to play a large variety of games, L like compare them to subscription services or memberships. I could pay $12 a month for Xbox Game Pass, or I could pay $9.95 for fucking Wizard 101. And that's American too, like Jenkins, do the math, how many Canadians is that? Huh? Oh, uh... About 17.2 2,000 Canadians, sir. Yeah, thank you. Fucking, what a joke. Anyway, so Game Passes, they get a pretty good score. Speaking of jokes, uh, cloud gaming services are the same idea as Game Passes, but you're actually streaming the games you play over the internet. These are the literal streaming services of the gaming industry. Uh, and they go right in the, this is the future box. All right, well, I think that about does it for the main methods and, oh, nope, it looks like we still got some things to talk about here. So, um, selling user information is, I guess, one way to make money. This is not accepted, nor should it be. It goes at the very end of the scale. Uh, oh, this is a fun one. So, arcade style, so like pay to attempt, I guess. Uh, in current year, this just kind of goes in the novelty box over by Jerry there. Back in my day, things were simple. You pop a quarter to the machine and you got to play Bum Bum's Fruit Roll Up escape for 20 seconds before you died. And all right, now we are done. So I hope you enjoyed my presentation. My name is Patrick. Um, now that we're done here, I'm gonna go get some sleep and wake up to another great day of work. Am I right, guys? All right, bye-bye, everyone.